Hello, so we continue with uh, unit one and this time around we are in now in session two where we are going to look at uh, the circular flow of income or specifically we we'll look at uh, the components of the aggregate demand. Okay, so uh, one here would first need to understand these components and uh, basically to even understand what aggregate demand is. Therefore, aggregate demand is the total spending on goods and services made in the economy. So we have different commodities that are produced and when you're computing aggregate demand, you focus on what you have made it, uh, the output of a given economy. And now with uh, this brief uh, definition, we are now good to know what are some of the components that make up aggregate demand. So aggregate demand constitutes of uh, four elements. The first one being the consumer spending, which we uh, uh, call some, uh, sometimes call as consumption, and it enters as C uh, in the aggregate demand equation. Then we also have uh, private investment, as well as uh, the government spending, which enters as uh, G in the equation. And finally, we have net exports, which is uh, simply the export minus the imports. So if uh, with this, then if uh, consumption is high, we expect aggregate demand to be high. When investment increases, we expect aggregate demand to increase. If government expenditure on the goods uh, increases, we expect uh, aggregate demand to increase. And if net export also increases, we expect aggregate demand to increase. Now for net export to be high, it means that we need to have a positive trade balance. That is, the exports must be more than the imports. Okay, so let me quickly take you through how uh, these components can be analyzed by looking at uh, different uh, sectors of the economy. Let's begin by first uh, looking at uh, the equation that aggregate demand therefore joining these components uh, equals consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus export minus the import. Or simply put, this last part here we can uh, replace this and simply put NX, which is a net export. So if you are looking at an equation and you find where there's G then plus NX, uh, it means this is net export. And this is just equal to export minus the import. Okay, so let's look at uh, the circular flow of income. Let's begin uh, by uh, looking at a two-sector model where we only have the households and the firm. So on the left-hand side, we can have the households. Households are responsible for supplying different factors of production to the firm. So on the other hand, we will have the firm, which is responsible for producing different goods and services that are consumed by the household. So, the household therefore owns all the factors of production. In addition, the households are the ones who are running the firm. So, we will keep it simple that when we, are, when we will be adding some components, even taxation, we know that tax is paid by both households and the firms. But here, we will simply uh, indicate that tax is paid by the households because households are the ones who own the firm. So, the, fact, the firms will supply the factors of production to the firm. Now, it, when the firms supply their labor, the firm, I mean, when the households supply their labor, the firm will have to pay the wage to the household. If the, uh, the firms supply their, uh, say, in, uh, capital, they will have to be paid uh, capital rent or interest for that capital. So this shows that when the firms supply the factors of production, and when the household supply the factors of production, the firm respond by paying for those factors of production. What then? Uh, will the firm do with the factors of production? Well, 
The firm will use those factors of production to produce different goods and services. Let's imagine that uh, the firm in this case is uh, Trade Kings. If Trade Kings hires the labor, buys the capital and different raw materials, they will use uh, those materials or those factors to produce different products. Let's assume that they uh, make boom. So they will use the boom. Now, this, uh, uh, these items that are, have been produced by the firms are supposed to be sold. And now the buyers are the households. So the firms receives, gets the factors of production from the households, make different goods and services, and then supply these goods to the households. But remember, the households will not get these goods and services for free. They will have to pay for these goods and services. So therefore, the household responds by paying for the goods and services uh, which are produced by the firm. The firms will use this same uh, money that they've received from the households to pay for the factors of production. And now that the households will have received payment for their factors of production, the households will use that money, which ma the money income, to pay for the goods and services. Hence the name secular flow of income because money will just be moving around from firm to household, firm to household. And now that we are only looking at a simple two-sector model where we only have the households and the firms, it means that whatever income the households receive, they use it for consumption. There is no any other activity that we are seeing here because whatever revenue the households have received, uh, for the uh, whatever income they've received for supplying different factors of production, they have also used it to pay for the goods and services. So with this, then we see that on the demand side, households are using the entire income on the consumption of the goods produced by the firm. On the income side, we also see that the incomes that are generated by the firms come as a result of the consumption that is made by the firm. So key to note here, the assumption we are making is that all the incomes generated by the firm is used on the consumption of goods and services and nothing else moves out. Hence, the amount of the goods that the firm supply to the households equal the income uh, that they get, which they will use to pay for the factors of production which is equal to the value of the factors of production that the households are supplying to the firm. Okay, let's now look at uh, the introduction of the financial market. What will happen to the model if we introduce the financial market? For you to be able to analyze that, you first need to understand what is happening here, that the outer loops, the blue arrows, are showing the movement of resource. The black arrows are showing the movement of income or money, to keep it simple. Therefore, if all the income is used on consumption by the household, then if you add the financial market, it means we're bringing in a new factor which would distort the operation of the smooth uh, flow of income. Let's bring the financial market in. So with our uh, initial uh, diagram that we saw, if we bring in the financial market to be the mediator, or I mean to stand in the middle of the household and the firm, it means that now the households will have to save, will have an opportunity to save the money. So they will get, they will supply their factors of production, and uh, from here they will get the uh, income uh, in terms of wage, profit, and so on from the firms. With this money that the households have received, with this income, the households now can do two things. They can use it on consumption, which is the C, paying for the goods and services, or, and they can use it to save. Now, if the households have not used the entire income on the consumption, it means then that the firms will have produced more goods 
if, and if supplied to the households, it will not be equivalent to the money that the, the households will pay to the firms because part of that money has been saved by the households. So if, for example, the money income that the firms had initially, uh, I mean the households had, was 50,000 kwacha. Now this time around, the households have decided to save 10,000 kwacha. It means then that the amount they will use to buy goods and services will be 40,000 kwacha and not 50. So if the households have produced items or goods worth 50,000 kwacha but only be able to sell uh, uh, 40,000 kwacha worth of goods, what happens to the uh, 10,000 kwacha worth of goods? Well, the firms will have to stock those items in forms of inventory and we call that the investment part of the secular flow. In addition, for the firms to be able to pay their households for the 50,000 quarter worth of factors supplied, the firms will have to go and borrow from the financial market and that borrowing plus the saving of the uh, stock in form of inventory is what we will refer to as investment. So therefore, the 10,000 kwacha which the households saved has been obtained by the firm and uh, uh, we, we bring in uh, this in as investment. And from this, therefore, we see that the savings here showed that money had leaked out of the smooth flow of uh, payments, which is uh, the black arrows. So money leaked out. But the firms have managed to bring that money back into the model through a borrowing. Therefore, savings is a leakage from the secular flow model, while investment is an injection back into the secular flow uh, of income model. With this then, we see uh, in terms of an equation that now households can do two things with the money that they receive as income. They can either use it on consumption or save or do both consumption and savings. Therefore, Y income will be equal to the consumption plus the savings. For from the uh, demand side, we see therefore that with uh, this uh, happening, the firms will be able to get their money back by, uh, via two channels either through the consumption by the households or via investment and therefore we see that uh, uh, income is equal to consumption plus saving or output will be equal to uh, consumption plus investment this is a simple uh, secular flow model without the government and from here key takeouts are that uh, savings is a leakage while investment is an injection. Let's bring the government into the model. Starting from our previous uh, graph where we have the households, the firms, and the financial market, we noted that households had two channels to which they can use their uh, money income. That is through savings or consumption. And firms had two channels of getting their resources, that is through consumption made by the households or through investment. What would be the implication of adding the government into the model? Well, if we now have the government into the model, it means then that with the money income that is received by the households and with our assumption that the households are the ones who own the firm, then it means that therefore these owners of all these resources will now be able to pay tax from their income. That is, the households then will be paying their taxes to the government. And now that there are three channels that have uh, appeared here, they have received their money income from the firms, but then they have now used this income to, do three, to uh, conduct three activities. One is to buy the goods and services produced by the firm. The second channel is to save part of that income. And now that there is a government, they are now obligated to pay taxes. So three channels of using the income. 
From the firm's perspective, the firms have only received part of the payment through the consumption of goods and services. After realizing that it's not the complete amount, the firms have also taken an extra mile to go and borrow from the banks and even put uh, their excess uh, products into warehouse as inventory. But even that still shows the firms that it's still not enough because some part of the money which the households paid in tax is missing from the model. As such, the firms will have to get some of those goods and supply them to the government. So you should note that the government also consumes uh, goods and services. They consume uh, 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 computers, the labor, and so on. And from there then, we see that the government will have to spend on the goods that are produced by the firms. So whatever goods and services come out of the firm, which, is, uh, which was not obtained by the households, will now have to be obtained by the government beyond what has been saved uh, or are kept in warehouse as inventory. So from this, we conclude therefore that net taxes, which is uh, the taxes that the uh, households pay, less any payments that they receive, is a leakage from the secular flow model, while government expenditure is an injection. Because firms will supply goods to the government, then governments will use the money to pay to the firms and therefore money will be back into the model. So government expenditure is, a, uh, is an injection into the model while taxes is a leakage from the model. So now from here, we see that we have two uh, leakages and two injections. Savings and taxes are leakages because they are moving away from the smooth floor, the black uh, uh, loops. Gr the green ones, that's uh, investment and uh, government expenditure, shows the injection money being brought back into the model. With this, in summary, put using an equation, we conclude that the households now can use their income to conduct three activities, consumption, savings, and paying tax. While the firms, if we put it simpler to keep the aggregate demand equation simple with our assumption that firms are the ones on the uh, demand side, so we see therefore that with the firms, they are now receiving their uh, resources or income in three channels, through the consumption that is made by the households, through the investment via borrowing and saving of inventory, as well as the expenditure that is made by the households. So they are generating these funds and pushed back into the model. Okay, so this is uh, what we call a closed economy. Anything beyond this, if we add the international trade, then we are opening the economy and we call it an open economy. Let's now divert our focus to look at uh, the open economy. With our previous uh, presentation, where we have a closed economy with uh, the government, the financial market, the households, and the firms, we noted that money is leaking out of the model through savings and taxes, and it is brought back into the model as an injection through investment and government expenditure. If we add the open uh, the foreign market, it means now we are bringing in the opportunity for export and import. If the households receive their income and use part of that money to buy goods that are produced domestically and also save part of that money and with the obligation they have to pay taxes, they go ahead and pay taxes. Households also have now, now have an opportunity to go and import commodities. So they will buy goods that are produced abroad. And this because money is moving from the country, let's say Zambia where we are, to another country in exchange for the goods that are produced abroad, it means then that an uh, import is a leakage. When you are buying the goods, you are paying the money out. So money is flowing out of your economy and therefore imports is termed as a, a leakage. Now that the, the firms have received uh, some money from the households via consumption, 
and this money was not enough, they went ahead to the bank to go and borrow. This money was still not enough, they sold some of the goods to the government. This money was not enough, they realized that there is another portion of the money that they have not received and therefore they have excess stock which has not been sold. What will the firms do? Well, the firms will have to sell those extra items to other countries. Meaning, the firms will have to export. The firms will have to export the commodities, which means that export is an injection into the secular flow model. This is because you are exporting the goods, but what you are getting is the money, and you are bringing that money back into the secular flow of income model. So when you export the commodities, you get the money, bring it back into the model. It means that export then is an injection into the secular flow model. With this, we see then that we have three leakages from this model and three injections into the model. Savings, taxes, and imports are leakages from the model because money flows out of the smooth flow model where investment government expenditure and the exports are injections into the model because money income flows back into the model through these channels. So with that then we can simply conclude that the entire uh, simple model has it that from the uh, household side we will see that they will use the income on consumption, savings, they will also pay taxes and import the commodities. From the firm's uh, perspective, putting it that way, in generating their income, the money, they'll get it through the consumption made by the households, the investment via borrowing, the government expenditure via selling commodities to the government, and also by exporting goods and then get the revenue from abroad. So these two then show, uh, show uh, uh, is these, these equations are showing us that if income is equal to consumption plus savings plus uh, taxes plus import, on the other side we are also seeing that income is equal to uh, consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus export, therefore in equilibrium it means that the two will be equal. But before we look at that, we can conclude therefore using a simple illustration that uh, given the households and the firms and that income is flowing from the households, uh, from the firms to the households, then the households will use this money to buy the commodities via consumption or to pay taxes, I mean to uh, save the money to the bank or pay taxes or import goods from abroad. And the firms will, will get the money that for the goods that they've sold or get the money through four channels, through the consumption that is made by the households or through investment by borrowing from the banks or through selling the commodities to government and we term this as government expenditure or by exporting commodities to other nations. With this then, we can bring in uh, the simple uh, equilibrium uh, model that since income is equal to consumption plus savings plus taxes plus import, and on the other hand, income is equal to consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus exports, then in equilibrium, it means that this part here, consumption plus savings, plus taxes plus import will be equal to consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus exports. Now keeping that simple, you will notice here that because you have consumption here and consumption here, if you take consumption the other side, you will have consumption minus consumption plus savings plus taxes plus imports. This will be equal to investment plus government expenditure plus exports. And here consumption and consumption will cancel. It means we remain with uh, savings plus taxes 
plus imports and this will be equal to investment plus government expenditure uh, plus exports so we see therefore that from this side we are seeing the leakages from the model we call it uh, withdrawal w leakage or withdrawal and on this other side we have the injections which we can term uh, we can use j to present them so we have the leakages on the other side and leakages in equilibrium will be equal to the injections into the model so presenting that with a smooth uh, uh, writings, we have our savings plus taxes plus uh, imports being equal to investment plus government expenditure plus exports. And uh, simply put, we have leakages or withdrawals being equal to the injections. If we try to rearrange these equations, we will see that if we bring I, the other side, then it means we will have uh, savings minus investment. So I has gone this side, so we have savings minus investment. So let me just do that. So we have S minus investment. And if we take these to the other side, it means then we'll have an equal sign here. So investment has gone this side, we've remained with G. G, tax is crossing going this side, so it will become negative minus T plus we have X there X here and M is crossing to come this side so it will become negative so if we put brackets here and here and here we will see that we will have this equation that we have here so what we have then is that the first part this component here is showing us uh, the the private savings or investment and then this other part here is showing us a government budget deficit or surplus if taxes are more than the government expenditure then we are going to record a surplus in this economy if the expenditure is more than the taxes then we are going to have the deficit simply put if G comes after T, like the way we've presented here, if you record a positive value here, it means you have a budget deficit. And if this value here is negative, then it means you will have a budget surplus. If, however, presented as T minus G, because this is the revenue and this is the expenditure, if expenditure is lower than the taxes, then this part will be positive and you will have a surplus and the converse is true for a deficit. The last component there shows the trade deficit or surplus. If the exports are more than the imports, then you will have a trade surplus. And if the exports are less than the imports, then you will have a trade deficit. Okay, so let's now analyze the uh, withdrawals and injections in more details. So withdrawals uh, 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 includes the savings, the taxes, and the import. While the injections, we have the investment, the government expenditure, and the export expenditure. Quick to note here is that if injections exceed the withdrawals, that is, we saw that in equilibrium, injections have to be, will have to be equal to the withdrawals. So if injections are more than the withdrawals, then the level of expenditure will rise. With that then, the increase in spending from injections is greater than the reduction in spending from withdrawals. And as such, GDP will rise and there will be economic growth. From there, we will also see that unemployment will reduce and this may lead to an increased inflation. So we should also note that the opposite will be true, that if uh, injections are less than the withdrawals, it means uh, the, increased, uh, the reduced spendings will lead to a, uh, a drop in GDP, will lead to an increase in unemployment, and uh, uh, inflation is likely to be low. Okay, so I hope you followed through. Thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, please send an email to moaoelias at gmail.com.
I will see you in the next session, which is a session three, where we are going to look at the determination of business activity and the, deriv uh, the uh, deriv derivation of the multiplier. See you.